Hi and welcome, this is Jennifer, I'm glad you're here. Today I'm going to show you an embossed impressions technique. Now if you are a technique junkie like me, you're going to really like today's video because it is so much fun and a great way to stretch your supplies. So what we're going to do is take a die and emboss it in two different ways. So we're gonna make an impression and heat emboss it. So I have a few examples for you, but this is something you can do with many intricate dies that you probably already have. I'll show you a few variations and give you some tips along the way. I'm using all new products from Simon Says Stamp as part of their holiday release. We're going to start with this card first. I have this beautiful tree die that could be used in many ways, and I'm just kind of planning out where I want it to be on my cardstock background. You can use any cardstock for this. And I also have picked out a sentiment. I just want to make sure I leave room for the sentiment on the bottom. Now we are going to do some heat embossing, so I'm going to brush this cardstock with my anti-static powder tool, which is really helpful to do. I highly recommend that. Now you're going to set up your die cutting machine as you would as if you were doing an embossing folder. So if you have a big shot, you just open up that tab, the first tab, and then put down your cutting plate, and then an embossing pad or embossing mat. This is really handy to have. If you don't have one, man, it's a great tool and it's very inexpensive. You can do this technique in a cuddle bug or other die cut machine also. Okay, so now I need to get our die ready. So I just have a board here and I'm brushing it with my anti-static powder tool in case that like any oils from my hands are on it. Then I'm taking my Versamark ink pad and I am going to incredibly gently just tap the cutting edge of this die. I want the Versamark ink, this clear pigment ink, to only ink up the raised areas, the cutting edges of this die. You do not want to press hard or you'll get ink all over the background of it and it won't give a clear image. You just want to tap very, very lightly. So now I'm going to take that die and place it on the paper. Once it's on the paper, don't move it, okay? Because it'll mess up your embossed image. Just place it right where you want it. Carefully put the other cutting pad on top and run it through your machine. And this is going to emboss or impress that die image into the paper. It doesn't cut because we have that embossing pad under it. And check it out. It kind of like does a kind of like a letter press look to it. Very subtle. But remember, we put ink on that die. So there's actually embossing ink in the like deepest valleys of that impression we just made. So I'm putting some Hero Art Silver Embossing Powder over it. Notice that I'm putting a lot on from different angles because I really want it to get into the crevices that we just created. Brushing away any excess powder, and then I'm going to heat set this and watch it. All of a sudden you get this very faint, like I'm, I shouldn't say faint, very thin lined embossed image because only the cutting edge of the die had the embossing ink. So that's the only place it's going to emboss. And look how beautiful this is. You have the heat embossing and the paper embossed. So you've got a lot of texture and a lot of shine going on here that you just can't achieve with a stamp alone. So this is a fun way to stretch any die you have, especially intricate ones. So now I need to do my heat emboss sentiment underneath it. To be honest, I could have done this with an acrylic block and just done regular stamping, but I'm using my Misty stamping tool because I want to make sure that I get this stamp perfectly straight and in just the right spot. I was really happy with how the tree came out and so I didn't want to ruin the paper with my stamped image. So again, I'm adding that Silver Hero Arts embossing powder and heat setting it. Now we have a sentiment that perfectly matches the embossed tree that we did. You'll notice I heated, I added some heat to the back of the paper just to kind of undo some of the warping that I did earlier when I heated my paper before the heat gun was hot enough. I did decide to trim this down. I'm going to make all cards that are three and a half by five today. I'm also cutting a piece of white craft foam. This has just got a little dimension to it. And I'm going to glue that in between the note card and our stamped panel. This allows me to have a nice raised image. This whole panel be evenly raised and it'll hold up when it goes to the mail. To give this even more shine, all those raised areas in between the heat embossed lines, I'm coloring in with my clear Wink of Stella shimmer pen. You could use the Spectrum Noir, but I find the tip of this one is much easier to get into tiny little places. So I colored in all those areas. That dark color that you see there will soften as it dries and you're just left with shine. 
I'm using a little bit of Ranger Multimedium to add uh, my little silver sequin to the top of it. I wanted to keep this nice and flat and check out all the shine you get. Now I wanted to give this a little more shine since it's a simple card. So I took my shimmer spritz, which I use in almost every video now. I took it into the shower, put my card on the floor of the shower, misted about three times from three feet above and just let the shimmer fall on it. So I'd have that faint shimmer all over the entire background of the card. Really makes a big difference when you have a solid piece of cardstock like this. And here you can really see the shine that you get. Now I wanted to show you a few more examples with just some variations to it. This one I did a watercolor background. You could create this watercolor background however you want. I just wanted to play with my Tombow markers today. So I grabbed some greens and blues and teals and I am just going to put color down and see how these work with my shimmer spritz that I showed you before instead of with water. So I'm just gonna show you real quick, but you could do any kind of watercolor background that you feel comfortable with. You could do any inked background, anything you want here. What I'm doing is I'm scribbling down some color onto my Tim Holtz watercolor paper. I'm actually using the textured side. And then I put some shimmer spritz on an acrylic block and I'm picking that up and using that to mix my, my markers together instead of water. And that really makes for a very nice shiny background. Here I'm just dipping my brush into the shimmer spritz and kind of flicking it on to the background and you can see how it gives kind of a starry night look to the background. It's really beautiful how it reacts and the shine that you get afterwards. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and heat set this. You wanna make sure you heat set this very well before you move on to the next step. So once I was really happy with the background, I just went ahead and trimmed it down. Again, I'm making three and a half by five inch cards. So I'm trimming these pieces down to about three and a quarter by uh, four and three quarters. I do like to ink the edges of my watercolor pieces with Distress Ink, really to just give it a nice defined edge. Next, I'm brushing it very generously with my anti-static powder tool. And we have a little ornament die here. I'm gently tapping the Versamark ink onto the cutting edge only, the raised area only, not pressing hard at all. I'm going to put that right onto my watercolor piece. Remember, I have an embossing pad under there. I'm gonna run this through my machine. Again, this won't cut. It'll instead just press into that watercolor paper. This time I'm adding white embossing powder. And this won't look like much before you heat set it. It looks like you've completely failed. <laughs> but if you're patient and go ahead and heat set it, check it out, you get this really fine line white heat embossing. It's really cool and you've got that dimension from it also. Looks great on that background. So now I'm going to go ahead and white heat emboss a little sentiment on here. This is from another new Simon's stamp, uh, holiday stamp set. I wanted something simple on this. Again, I'm wa adding white embossing powder. Now I felt like my ornament wasn't standing out enough, so I'm going to cheat and just put a little bit of some darker Distress Ink over it instead of adding more water watercolor. Nobody will ever know that I cheated to make this a little bit darker in a few places. It really makes a big difference. I added some Blueprint Sketch, some Mermaid Lagoon, and even a little bit of Twisted Citron. It just makes everything pop nicely. So now I wanted to make it look like the ornament's kind of hanging from the top of a card. So I took some white string and I'm poking a hole at the top of the ornament and pushing the string through it. Honestly, I couldn't find a regular needle, so that's why I did it this way. I'm going to tape that end on the back of our stamped panel and wrap the other end around the top of it so it looks like there's a string hanging down. And then I'll trim the excess off the back also. Now I did put a piece of craft foam between this and the note card and I glued it all together as I showed you before. I'm telling you, I really think it's important to use craft foam behind solid pieces like this instead of strips of craft foam tape because it doesn't go through the mail very nicely if you do that. So now I did a little bow from some of the same string and I'm just adhering it up there with a touch of that Ranger Multimedium. It holds nicely and it looks like you tied it there. I also added a few Hero Arts pearls to the pattern. You could use uh, like a Nouveau Drops or uh, liquid pearls instead if you wanted to. So I have a couple more examples I'm just gonna show you very quickly, just so you can see how you can use this technique in a variety of ways. This next one's kind of clean and simple looking. I have some Simons' Stamp Audrey Blue cardstock, my favorite color, putting my anti-static powder tool on it. I'm using my Versamark to just very lightly, very lightly, 
Just touch the cutting areas of these three new Simons' Stamp Snowflake dies. Now remember, when you place these down, as soon as the die touches the paper, you have to leave it there. If you move it, it'll give you a messy embossing. And you also want to be careful when you put the cutting plate on top that it doesn't shift those dies. So I just run it through my machine with my embossing pad, and this gives me a beautiful impressed or dry embossed image. Now I'm putting white embossing powder over it. Be sure to put it on there in many different directions so you fill those crevices. And then as you heat this, that's when the magic happens, and you see those fine lines of white heat embossing deep into that, those impressed areas. So I decided to make this a thank you card. Check out that thank you stamp set over there on the right by Christina. It is beautiful, and I had to use one of those sentiments on here. I did miss this with some sh shimmer spritz. You can see a little dot there on the left. That was from my dog's nose. She sniffed it, and I'm hoping that dries. <laughs> I also added some Hero Arts white, um, white pearls. Now here's the last example. I wanted to show you this works well with a word die also. This is a beautiful new Believe word die. It comes with the shadow also. I love the look of this die and there's a stamp set that matches it. I'm going to very lightly put my Versamark ink pad. We're not pressing down at all. Just very lightly tapping it. Now I'm going to put this down onto my cardstock. Be sure not to move it. Put my cutting plate on top, run it through and now we have the impression of that word on our cardstock. I'm adding some Hero Arts gold embossing powder to this. I really like the look of coral and gold together. Now I wanted to add like a little bit more to that sentiment. So here is the matching Believe stamp set that goes so well with that die. It's such a great set. I'm going to go ahead and gold heat emboss some additional sentiment underneath the word Believe. Now I wanted to keep this pretty simple, so I'm going to use my Wink of Stella to kind of fill in the lines on that word Believe. I also put a piece of craft foam behind it and glued it to a note card. And I added a few little sequins here and there just to keep it simple. So here are all the cards we created with the same technique. They all have kind of a different look to them. I did add a lot of shine. Here are two that I never turned into a card, but I wanted to show you. This one has some dark watercolor background. And this is the technique with gold embossing powder on black cardstock with the Wink of Stell in the middle. I thought that was beautiful, but I just didn't make anything with it. So anyways, if you're interested in the products that I use today, they're linked below in my YouTube description. You can also go to my blog at jennifermaguireinc.com where there's a blog hop with fun giveaways. In the middle are two more videos that might be of interest to you. They show other ways to use intricate dyes creatively. I hope this technique inspires you and that you'll give it a try. And if you have any questions, please leave a comment below. And thanks so much for watching.